Yes, you yes, said Nigerians will, going will forward will, will be proud depending of all the green passport. Yes, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the minister the for minister uh, digital uh, economy passport, has been heavily criticized when at some point it was attributed to have said, Oh, the passport, the, the, passport, the green passport is worth not that, is what that is considered what. How people really perceive and, and I mean, you are the Minister of Interior. Minister of in the China United States, is the Ministry of Homeland. That is the equivalent of, of that ministry. In terms of giving Nigerians the pride of place travel, as a citizen of this country, what are you doing in that so respect? Visa. No, no, we're doing a lot. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll have a lot in the pipeline. And as I said earlier today on the program, I said very clearly, we're coming up with a work plan and we're going to come up with KPIs, key performance indicators. We're going to have our timelines and we're going to you know, yeah, do, we're going to carry the civil society and um, of course the media along we want nigerians to be able to judge us virtually nigerians should be able to to mark our scorecard we should be able to give us a scorecard after every quarter this is what we what we aim to achieve under the leadership of the president so number one thing that i think we need to do is that first of all as nigerians we need to learn to treat ourselves with respect and that can be seen as i always say the first um, image maker of this of this country mm -hmm. are immigration officers. When foreigners want to come to Nigeria, they, ask, uh, they apply for visa. Who do they see at that point? Immigration officers. When they come into Nigeria at the airport, the first point of contact, immigration officers. We need to learn to treat ourselves with a bit of respect. Treat Nigerians know fully, knowing fully well that being in uniform does not give you the opportunity, does not give you the right to abuse and travel on the right of average Nigerians. That's the word. Then number two, we must also do our best, as I said earlier today, remove, if possible, to, to the barest minimum, we must re remove human contact. That's the truth. This is, era, this is 2023. This is the era of technology. I'm an IT person. I've, do, I've done IT, information technology, all my life. You know, this is 2023. There is absolutely no reason why the, the human yeah. factor should play such a critical role in some of these things. For instance, I'll give you an example. Where does corruption set in in terms of issue of passport? People go to immigration offices to be able to go and do uh, biometrics. biometrics. A lot of people will have to pay to lobby to even get a date to do some of these things. These are things that can be automated through a simple queuing system, queuing solution application. We can do all these things. And basically, we can also, <laughs> that most of our post offices all around, I have told the immigration service, if there's a need for us to inc increase our front offices, for instance, they have, we have post offices all around, we could go into partnership with post offices and be able to use this place as even enrollment centers. It will interest you, maybe Lagos has only four enrollment centers also. This is, a, this is a state of about over 20 million people. It's unacceptable anywhere in the world. So we can make use of our post office. We can even go into partnership with some of our financial institutions, the banks and whatever, and be able to see how to bring this solution closer to the people. That people don't need to travel. People don't need to kill. When there is scarcity, there is always tendency for corruption because people cannot wait on the queue so they have to show the queue so but, we, digitize we have to digitalize the whole place and we have to also decentralize the whole enrollment yeah. system we have to decentralize the whole enrollment system and make it at least people can walk in into their uh, into the po nearest post office people can walk into maybe financial institutions and so many other we're still playing with so many ideas we we were to hold a meeting today but we're unable to because of um the, the strike, but I'm sure that on Thursday we'll be holding a meeting myself and immigration service and the service providers to be able to come up, come out effectively with definite timeline, with definite solutions to this. But well, I can you assure you, tonight. we will definitely, I'm passionate about this, I'm committed to this, mm -hmm. because the president is committed to this. The president is worried. He feels the pains of Nigerians. He's worried that Nigerians should not see a right as a privilege. He is bothered. He is concerned. He is passionate about this. And as a minister in this government, it is my responsibility to make sure that I help the president to fulfill his aim of making sure that he brings Suko to an average Nigeria. So two weeks, you said, Nigeria, I mean, within the next few weeks, we should, be a, we should see a situation where the backlog has been... Bad. What we're trying to do... And in two weeks, you should be able no, to... Let, 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 let me say this very clearly. What we're trying to do is that I have given them instruction. I need to know the number of backlogs that we have in every passport office. That is number one. We need to know. And 
within a specific period, we need all this backlog taken care of. Henceforth, after clearing this backlog, no Nigerian should wait for more than two weeks. Because they, so say, far, yeah, they say that there is no enough uh, 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 materials to, to get. That's what you hear. And they will say, oh, uh, the reason I, you I, cannot I, get dates, in fact, when you apply online, they will give you a date of maybe next year. No, before, be, because before, that is what so, I'm saying. Those are the issues. Those are the things I'm telling you, Shun. Because the demand outweighs the supply. That scarcity, indirectly, when the demand is more than the supply. Where you have four, I think just about four, if I'm not wrong, about four centers in Lagos, a, a state of over 20 million people, is unacceptable. So the four centers are obviously overstretched. No, Korea and Kenya. No, I think they're about four. Okay. You know. So, but now they're overstretched. So by virtue of that, because Nigerians are desperate, they want to get this thing. Mm -hmm. They want to get their right. So automatically corruption comes in so we when we remove that when we decentralize the whole project then we remove the incentive for corruption when you remove the incentive for corruption definitely things will fall in line and people will be able to have this with maximum with with the easiest of ease share and all these to the video finish on a share and share and go vera follow this page for more updates i beg voila share this video share and share and share and for more updates, Mona Shera, Mona Yearly, I don't know, listen to 80 minutes of interior talk about passport, about visa, about everything. If you know that you like this video, Shera, Shera, not the teaching with a Shera, like Shera, give people. Me only want to see this update. Shera, follow this page. Drop your, drop your thoughts. Mona Shera.